Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, you've either built yourself or you've been out and bought yourself a new observatory. Whether you've built yourself a roll-off roof shed or been and bought a dome or um, a metal shed that you've converted or whatever it may be and you've got all your equipment in there, very expensive kit and all of a sudden you start realising you've got uh, condensation. Uh, this is not great when you're talking about metal items and especially expensive electrical uh, metal items. So how do you combat this? Well, I'm going to give you a few tips that I have used in my particular uh, shed that I use here, my Astro shed, uh, of how I've combated it and had no problems at all with condensation. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it or uh, there's no other way because there probably is, but I found this works well for me, so it may well work well for you too. So I've got a, a shed here, which is an, an off the shelf shed. It's just one that I bought few hundred pounds and converted it it's just tongue and groove 19 millimeter single skin that's it uh, and i converted the roof to open outwards it's not a roll off roof so how do i stop getting any condensation well the first thing is i always have my scope and mount uh, under a cover within the observatory which you can see in this picture here now obviously this is not ideal for remote users because you're not going to be able to remove the cover if you're away from home so this video really is aimed at people who've got back garden observatories and you're operating them and imaging from within the house at home. So I keep my scope under cover all the time when it's not in use. Now this is mainly because to combat condensation you need two things. You need ventilation, airflow, and heat. A combination of the two ideally. So rather than trying to heat the whole area within here, which is only five foot square, so it's not on the large side at all. Not like I get some of you guys who I know have got probably observatories that are you know, 8, 10, 12 foot in size. To try and heat something like that is going to cost a lot of money. So I put a cover over it and I just heat the air underneath that cover. And it keeps it 5 or 6 degrees above the ambient temperature of the shed. I'll go into how I heat it a bit later in the video. Secondly, you need airflow. You need ventilation, you need some form of movement of air within the structure. Now, like I said, this is an off-the-shelf shed. Um, it's not a perfect shed and it does alter with winter and summer. The wood swells, the tongue and groove moves and the variation over the summer and winter, you get a variation of about two inches in height of the shed. So there is movement and you can probably see behind me here, there is small gaps where the roof meets the shed in all four corners. Now this gives me natural ventilation. I've also got slight gaps around the door where it doesn't seal absolutely perfectly. Now this is fine, it's totally watertight, no problems at all with water ingress, but it does give me natural ventilation so I don't need any other types of vents. If you've got other types of observatories such as uh, one of these metal sheds or the, or the Keta plastic sheds or even the domes that I know are susceptible to condensation, Having vents put in the side of it is a very good idea. Maybe a couple at the top and a couple at the bottom, just to give you a flow of air around the inside of the structure. This will help no end towards stopping. And again, with the heat, this is a combination that you need. So I have a heater that's on this that works underneath the cover and I have it on at night, most nights all through the winter from probably four o'clock in the afternoon till 10 o'clock the following morning. If it's very, very cold or very, very wet, then I tend to have it on 24 hours a day. Um, I'll show you the heater. It actually works. It's 25 watts of power, so it doesn't cost much to run. And it is only heating the air underneath the cover. So it's not a big area. So it is constantly turning on and off. So as regards cost, I don't notice it at all. It's very, very good. Um, in extreme situations, Certainly after I've had an imaging session, I do use a dehumidifier. Now I own, I've only used this four times since I've had it. And that's after four different imaging sessions. Because this is a roof that opens outwards, if it's a frosty or very damp evening, then I do get condensation or frost on the inside. So when I close it, I tend to put a flat cover over the top of the scope, just so that there's no damp or anything falling on. And then I put the dehumidifier on. And the dehumidifier looks like this. Now this isn't the standard condensing dehumidifier. This is actually a desiccant dehumidifier. Now there is a big difference. 
your standard condensing dehumidifiers, yes, they're a lot cheaper, they're cheap to buy and they're cheap to run, but they only work efficiently down to around 15 degrees. Desiccant ones will work efficiently right down to one degree. Uh, and this is because they work, they've got a desiccant disc inside them, which is rotating very, very slowly. And there's a fan blowing the air across the desiccant and the desiccant then removes the moisture. Now, as the disc turns, the desiccant goes through a heater at the bottom, which dries it out. And this is what expels the water. Now, the upside of this is as the air is expelled from it, it's not only completely dry, but it's also warm because it's just come from a heated area in, in the actual unit itself. Now, these units are more expensive. This, this one of mine is around £160 and they are more expensive to run. They use around 180 to 220 watts of electricity compared to around 50 to 90 watts for a standard cheaper condensing one. So, you know, it's up to you which one you prefer. This one will move around a half, half a pint of water in half an hour. It does take a lot. It has a two litre tank built in, but I've got it piped out permanently under the observatory so the water just runs outside. So let's have a look at the heater that I've got on this. This is the heater, and it's a heater that I actually made myself. It's a 12 volt heater. It's got a heat sink here with a 12 volt heating pad between that and an aluminium plate. And then a control there from off, on, and obviously anywhere in between from 0 to 50 watts. Now this is controlled from a Wi-Fi switch, so I can turn it on and off from an app. And it's also got a temperature and humidity sensor, so it can actually be turned on and off by setting a determined temperature or a determined humidity. Now I just made this from spare parts that I've got. I did used to have a juice strap wrapped around the mount here, and that worked equally as well. And I have it set on a timer, so that the timer comes on at night and it's take, turned off in the morning. That's the heater. Like I say, you can just use a juice strap. A juice strap will be fine uh, around the uh, pier itself. A long, maybe 1.2 metre juice strap around the pier, 12 volt. I used to run one of these and it worked just as well as this heater. Absolutely no problems at all. The other thing I do after an imaging session is put this on the end of my scope. I actually featured this in my 3D printing video. It's all 3D bins and it's a desiccant holder and it goes on the end of my scope after a session and it has these sachets of desiccant inside it and then I pop it on the end and I'll leave that in for 24 hours and that will remove any residual moisture that might be around the lens lurking in there that you just don't want getting into your lenses because you don't want fungus growing or anything like that. Also, I have one of these. Well, I have three of these actually. Now these are little Bluetooth sensors and they give you, they work off an app. They have a battery which lasts about two years. I have one on the mount. I have one here in the observatory and I've got one outside, a little bit overkill, but I did buy a pack of three. So, so in an app, I can then see the constant temperature, dew point and humidity, both outside, in here and on the mount under the cover. So I can get an up-to-date reading all the time of exactly where I am. And I've never, ever, ever had a problem with dew under the cover uh, at all. It's been absolutely perfect. Like I say, that heater will keep it around about five to six degrees warmer than the ambient temperature in the shed. And in the shed, it's usually one to two degrees warmer than outside uh, most of the winter. In the summer, it does get very warm in here. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick video just to give you some ideas of what I do and how I combat uh, condensation. You need airflow, you need heat if possible, you need a combination of the two. But like I say, those, those of you who have built your own observatories that are probably double skinned with insulation between, you may well not need um, the heat as well. You may, it may keep a much higher temperature inside than outside anyway due to the, uh, the quality of your building. This is only single skin. And I know domes particularly are quite susceptible to condensation. Uh, so again, a good idea in there, uh, whether you use a cover like I do, you know, or whether you heat the whole of the inside of the dome, whatever it may be. I've got a friend who uses this same 
uh, desiccant dehumidifier as me inside his dome and swears by it. He uses it a lot, he doesn't use anything else at all but that. I think he runs it every day for so long. Um, so yeah, it's up to you how you do it, but a good, com a good combination of heat and airflow is very, very, very important. So I hope that was some use for you. Uh, again, I'm talking really, this really is aimed at people in the UK. I'm talking about UK, you know, temperatures and, and humidity. Obviously, it's different in other areas of the world. You're obviously going to have um, different, completely different conditions. And I can't really speak for those, but this is what works for me in the, in the Midlands, in the UK, with our weather that we have here. So uh, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up and maybe think about subscribing. Until the next one. Clear skies.